All right, guys, we are live. Episode 90 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thanks for joining us, guys. This is the first time I've ever done the show going in by myself. We should have Jennifer coming in here shortly to help me out and make sure I don't pass out from not keeping the show flow going during the show. But we're going to just go ahead and jump into our guest today. Olympic athletes. I, 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 used it, I used them as the announcement. I said they are the definition of athlete. I don't know if how they take that, but reading up on them, it, I'm really impressed. And we have Tracy and Lanny Barnes with us here today. What's going on? Not a whole lot. Thanks for having us. We're excited to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you. Like I said, I, you know, I haven't been too excited for an uh, episode of The Shooter's Mindset in a while because I think you know, just doing a little research on you guys and watching some videos, there's a lot of stories here. You guys you know, traveling. You guys are fishing, outdoors, hunting, you name it. You guys are, you know, you guys do it, and that's awesome to see, especially in two ladies, you know, because it kind of like, I mean, it goes hand in hand with all the dude things, you know, <laughs> you're fishing, you know, I got the fishing poles in the back, shooting, it, you know, it's hobby to hobby, man, it's the ultimate get along. So we're gonna talk yeah. to you guys. Uh, also, um, I want to remind you guys that are new to the show, watching the show for the first time, man. The Q and A section. There's a Q and A section in the bottom left hand corner of the show. I think there was a problem with it. Last week, but I, it should be up. I'm hosting the show, so I'm not I'm not watching it, but hopefully it is there. If it's not there, you can always go to the Shooter's Mindset on Facebook. There'll be a post where you can post your your, your questions below. We'll try to get those questions answered throughout the show. All right. Also, want to hit the show sponsors. As usual, we have Fort Mill Munitions for your handgun ammunition needs. Check out Fort Mill Munitions. That's TeamFMM.com. We have a discount code that we're going to mention a little bit later on in the show. But 9, 380, 40, 45, they're coming up on 38 Super Comp for you open shooter guys. They're going to have it there, so check them out. We have uh, Brett Russo, always a big supporter since like the very first episode. So uh, Brett Russo, thanks for, for all the help. And Blaytech Industries for your holster needs, three-gun gear, knife gear, AR accessories. They kind of have it all, so go check out blaytechindustries.com. Uh, uh, we went over the Q&A section. That'll be going live in about two minutes on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page. So if you rushed over there trying to post a question, um, it'll be up in two minutes. I got that scheduled. So let's kick it off here. So for those who are unfamiliar with you guys, tell us a little bit more about yourself and kind of your career. Yeah, um, I'm Tracy, and this is my twin sister, Lanny. Uh, we were born and raised in Durango, Colorado which is the southwest corner of the state, and yeah, grew up shooting, hunting, fishing, doing all those outdoor things that you mentioned earlier that most of the boys are doing, so we had a lot of fun doing that. Our dad kind of, he had three girls, so brought us into that because it was what he loved to do, and uh, yeah, I got into shooting sports and got into biathlon uh, just before high school. Yeah, and biathlon took us all around the globe to some of the most cold and miserable places on the planet. And uh, some nice places too. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of cold places. And uh, ended up going to three Olympics and incredible experience. And now we're jumping into three gun. Yeah, so I mean, we talked a little bit in the pre chat about some of the places uh, Tracy was telling me about and uh, countries I never really even heard of that you guys have been to, you know, screaming cold weather, weather. I said, you know, I'm from Florida, so, you know, I told her, hey, the closest, cl coldest place that I've been to this year for shooting was like 21 degrees, and that's probably nothing from what you guys have seen in those countries or where you're at in Colorado, actually. Yeah, we would commonly uh, spend about four to six months in Europe every winter uh, competing in the World Cup or U European European Cups, things like that. We started out Scandinavia, traveled all over Central Europe, uh, Russia. We even made it to Korea. Korea. Um, the all, South. Yeah, uh, South Korea. All sorts of places like that. Super cold. One thing that we always fought that a lot of shooters don't have to deal with is uh, frostbite. Lenny frostbit her ears quite a few times. Your trigger finger, you know, trying to make sure you can feel that when you come into the shooting range, those sorts of things. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, crazy stuff. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm sure the travel. I'm sure the travel will get old eventually. But if you're traveling to all the, you know, around the world doing this stuff, I mean, there's got to be more pros and cons, obviously there. So that's that's a good thing. I wish, you know, a lot of people wish they can get out to those areas and, you know, compete, you know, and put it all on the line. So that's kind of fun. 
Um, what do we have here? Is there a sport, like we said, we talked about a lot of things, three gun, fishing, outdoors, we kind of already hit all that stuff already, but is there a sport you guys always wanted to try that you haven't? Oh, tons of different sports. Pretty much any gravity sport out there you could name, something where you're flying off something or, you know, dropping off some big height, you know, something like that, all that crazy stuff that you probably shouldn't do. I would like to try to once. <laughs> yeah, we were under contract with the Olympic team the last 15 years, so we weren't actually able to do a lot of the, the fun things that people can do on a regular basis, like downhill skiing or, uh, you know, tubing behind a boat and, you know, things like that. So we're kind of looking forward to just having a, a, a normal, fun life and, and doing a lot more shooting. Yeah, it's definitely kind of a switch switch of gears a little bit. We're going to talk about your three-gun stuff just in a second here as we're coming up here on this stuff. Let's see. Uh, so you guys said you you did, uh, obviously in the Olympics, you did a bi biathlon. So enlighten mm -hmm. some of us who are not aware of this type of style of sport or this type of game. What is it and, you know, what what is it that you guys do in that sport that, that's so, you know, training intensive? Bathlon is the combination of cross country skiing and shooting. It's the only shooting sport in the Winter Olympics. And uh, we just, when we started it, we just absolutely fell in love with it. it the combination of the, the physical exertion and, and the skill set of shooting, physical exertion of skiing, and then the skill set of shooting is just incredible. Um, when you can actually put those two together, it's an amazing feeling. And, which is hard to do. Yeah, which is hard to do. Um, some days you'll shoot really well and and ski horribly, and other days you ski really great, and you know, the shooting won't be as good. So um, just putting those two together and, and being able to travel around the world, incredible experience, you know, seeing different cultures and, and uh, you know, pushing yourself to the limit and trying to reach your goals is just, you know, pretty, pretty incredible. So what, what were you guys shooting at the end of this you guys are obviously skiing, so you guys are getting the heart rate up. You guys are probably breathing really hard after you're done doing that. What what type of rifle were you shooting at that time? Yeah, so uh, we were shooting a 22 rifle, and the targets are uh, at 50 meters. And you have a metal – it's kind of like a plate rack, uh, five targets that you have to hit. Each time you miss a target uh, – uh, each time you come into the range, you have five targets that you have to shoot at. For every target that you miss, you have to ski a 150-meter extra penalty loop um, before you head out on the ski course and continue skiing the rest of the the trail. Um, so it's kind of it's brutal in that respect because you know the in Europe, you know there's this huge stadium full of people that are that are cheering you on, and then and then every time you get in the penalty loop, they boo you. <laughs> so you're <laughs> around the pelly loop and you're already bummed about missing a target and then these people are booing you and you just you're trying to ski as fast as you can so you can get back out on the course and yeah it, it may it's motivation for actually hitting your targets but man sometimes when you miss them you know and the wind's gusting and oh you just yeah you just gotta gut it out and get out of the pelly loop fighting. as fight as fast as you can there we go we have a we have a live question that came in here from black stang he said tracy Tracy and uh, Tracy, I'm your biggest fan. Bishop, he says it's Bishop, biggest fan. Uh, tell tell us about your artwork. So he's kind of ready jumping into that artwork. Yeah, that's actually uh, me, Lanny. Um, I, I've been an artist for a long time now. Uh, been doing commission pieces. Actually, did a couple pieces for Bishop. Yeah, um, hey Bishop. And uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy art. It's the one and only thing besides cleaning my firearms that I can actually do sitting. Um, I don't, I don't do really well sitting in, in one place for a long time. Um, so if you see me get up and do jumping jacks, then you know, just ignore me. But, we understand why. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been doing artwork and I, I do a lot of uh, wildlife and uh, pretty much everything. Portraits but, and stuff. Portraits, but yeah, I have a website, uh, the Olympian artist.com. And, yeah, I, I just enjoy doing artwork for other people. What kind of artwork is it? Because, you know, artwork is, you know, kind of a broad broad deal. Yeah, I, I mostly do uh, um, white charcoal on black paper. I love the, the contrast that you get uh, from those. It, it just really brings things out. 
And, uh, but I, I'll, I do a lot of things. I'll, I'll do pencil, uh, ch uh, all sorts of charcoals, uh, paint. Um, I, I'm getting into, uh, um, uh, all sorts sculpting of different stuff. sculpting and, and things like that this, this year. Clay. But. Yeah. Clay and sculpting is pretty awesome. We're going to check out that website here. Mike might, might have to purchase something from you. That's pretty awesome. So let's see. Uh, we have uh, another Q and A from blank man. He said, uh, that was a good movie, by the way. I don't know if you guys remember the movie Blank Man. I was kind of a fan. But uh, Blank Man says, uh, how do you mentally prepare to shoot a complete match? So I don't know if this can kind of go both ways, your three-gun matches and your biathlon stuff. But what do you have here? Yeah, there's a lot of different approaches that you can take to uh, mentally preparing for a match. It, it depends on on you personally and, and how you – if say, say, for example, you get really nervous before matches – you might want to try uh, what we call some uh, some keywords and distractions. You know, there's there's good distractions and there's bad distractions. So <clears throat> bad distractions obviously are you thinking about um, the weather, your competitors, how your equipment's running, things like that. Good distractions are things that will keep your mind off of those. So a lot of times you can use a keyword. Um, this keyword can be anything. You can come up with tree, relax, what you know, whatever you, whatever knock you can come down. up with, knock them down. Yeah, something like that. And you just uh, practice whenever you go out to the range. You practice, uh, you know, using these keywords and uh, um, helping you to kind of relax before you go into into the shooting, so that uh, so that you can really focus what you need to. Uh, before the match and, and focus on the good distractions and not the ones that are kind of going to bring you down and make you nervous. There you go. Well said. Jennifer's in the house. Man, you saved me. I thought I was going to go after this whole thing by myself. I think I was doing pretty well, though. I, must I don't know. I don't know if you can handle it by yourself. Can't know. be trusted. Hey, Tracy and Lanny. Hey, how's it going? Sorry I'm late to the game. I had a child with a baseball game. Nice. Yeah, how'd it go? Yeah, we don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it was not good. <laughs> oh man, that's, that's that's they they booed him. Did they boo him like when they missed the targets? Did that happen? Oh, was it that bad? There's no. no targets in baseball, Anthony. Oh yeah, that's true. I'm kind of getting off. <laughs> but no, but thanks for coming in. You got the Glock hat. Did you, you imagine the mom in the stands with a Glock hat and a Vortex shirt on? And you're on the opposite. You're on the opposite side, trying to boo her kid. It's kind of something that you kind of think twice about. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> so there it is. Yeah. All right. So uh, we haven't. I haven't got a chance to check any Facebook stuff, but we had some Q and A stuff come in. So thank you guys for the questions. Is there yeah. a post on Facebook? Yeah, there is. There's one. Okay. Cool. I'll watch it. All right, so we're 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 moving on to this one, and they 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 kind of hit on some good mindset before matches deal just now. So getting you know bouncing off of that, how does one even kind of try out for an Olympics? Like obviously that's got to be hard in itself to even make a team, let alone win you know gold, silver, bronze, fourth, fifth, whatever it is. Um, and what's the intensive training like to even make a team? You know, it's 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 just like any sport. There's there's different levels um, that kind of build up to the next level. Uh, you know, you you start out your your local level, then you know move to regional, then state, then national, then international, and then Olympics. You know, it sounds simple, but um, it's you know uh, a lot it's a more long, complicated, long process. But you know, there's there's just a bunch of steps that you follow. So, like she said, you start at, at each different level you start locally competing and then work your way up and once you get kind of to that that national level then then there's more tryouts and those tryouts can kind of help you make that international team and then once you make that international team then you can try out um, to be on be on the Olympic team and so as far as training for something like that uh, for us for biathlon because uh, it was an endurance sport on top of the shooting um, it was it was a full-time full -time deal like uh, we had about a couple weeks off in the spring after the season that we wouldn't train and then the rest of the year we were training um, a lot of physical training so we do like a typical day would be 
we'd start out and we'd do like a morning run, which is just like 15 minutes to get the muscles warmed up and you do some stretching and then you have breakfast. And then we do our main workout of the day, which is two to four hours of physical work with uh, a lot of times combined with the shooting. So we do running or roller skiing or biking or skiing, some sort of physical activity with the shooting. And then we have lunch, you know, nap, something like that. You know, you got to take your naps. And, uh, and then uh, in the afternoon, another two to four hour workout, typically, sometimes maybe shorter, but uh, sometimes with shooting, sometimes not, you know, just again, trying to build that physical base because um, it takes a, a lot of physical training to get to that level. And then, you know, dry fire and stuff in, in the evening. So uh, it was a full-time deal all, all day pretty much every day so and then usually you have one day off a week because you got to mentally take a break and physically take a break because that's the most important part of training is, is the recovery that's how you make your make your gains in in, uh, in any kind of physical activity is, is the recovery so just uh, you know pretty much a full day of working hard at it and dedication you know that you know, just yeah. It's funny because it, it, it this, like I said, this stuff this piqued my interest, and you know, you never really hear the behind it. You watch it on TV, but you never really see the behind the scenes thing. I mean, you know, there's some sports channel, ESPN might do a documentary on a particular person or something like that, but you really don't know what it takes to even get to that spot, no matter how you place. You know what I mean? So I think it's kind of interesting to hear, you know, what you guys went through and you know the training part of it. You know, so it kind of you know you put on you put on some rocky, you know, and 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 you, and, you, and you go for it. What what are you thinking, Jen? What are you thinking on this? Well, I was wondering how many years did it take you to get to Olympic level? Uh, let's see. We we made our first Olympic team probably. Would you say seven years seven after years. seven eight years after we started, and uh, we we actually started a little late compared to a lot of our. Um, competitors. Uh, you know, we started in high school and a lot of people um, in the U.S. Uh, start a little bit younger, especially in the skiing. And uh, Europeans, they have schools where kids, you know, young, middle school, middle school, even elementary school, where they go to school just for biathlon and the schooling and their education is secondary, yeah. um, which is crazy. But, uh, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you eat, sleep, breathe, biathlon. Um, in the last 15 years, up until the time we retired, there wasn't a single moment, awake or, or not, that we weren't thinking about biathlon. Because everything you did, how much you slept, what you ate, uh, how much recovery you got, um, how much time you spent on your feet, uh, you know, and how your training panned out, that all affected how, how you performed and so there wasn't a moment that we weren't thinking about biathlon. So very interesting so like uh, I'm learning a lot of stuff so obviously it, this is you would say the Europeans are are kinda like the people to beat in that type of game P pretty yeah. easy to say. Yeah they uh, um, they dominate the sport for sure uh, when it's a biathlon is like the Super Bowl over in Europe. Uh, at any given World Cup competition, there's 30 to 50 thousand spectators at a at a competition. They have big, huge outdoor venues, and, and these people show up. We, a lot of, sometimes we have night competitions, and they'll show up at eight o'clock in the morning and sit out there in the freezing cold all day just to have their seat for the competition. And uh, it's crazy. They they love it over there. It's it's such it's such a high energy and it's so exciting. I mean, they, you know, they'll, they, you get swarms of people wanting your autograph, and then you come over here, and everyone's like, so, what, so what's biathlon? <laughs> Is that underwater basket weaving? And you know, <laughs> and now you get, and and so what's three again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of totally new to this stuff. Before. Before kind of you know looking into you guys' website and looking up videos on you guys, I had no idea what that that game was honestly. You know, yeah. I'm more I'm more the mainstream kind. Of, like if I would watch Olympic basketball and track and you know stuff like that, I would you know those type of games. I just never if I didn't understand it, I really didn't care to watch it type of deal. So maybe that's just me. But now since yeah. I understand it, now it's worth watching. 
Yeah, and it's it's a little it's one of it's like any sport you gotta you gotta kind of have an idea of what's going on to like you said understand it. Um, Biathlon's exciting because it's it's a lot of like head to head competition. So a lot of the shootouts that you see in three gun, like the three gun nation shootouts and stuff, that's that's biathlon. Like we have our our races are like head to head. So you come into the range and you're shooting like right next to the person that that you're competing against and you know you can see them shooting they can see you shooting and it's there's a lot of pressure and a lot of different variables that go into biathlon shooting you got the wind and the blowing snow and and then you got your competitor shooting right next to you all that mental pressure and then you have all those 30,000 people that are either screaming when you hit or uh, booing when you miss a target so it's it's a lot of pressure and it's a lot of fun that kind of shooting. So um, and it's exciting to watch when when you know kind of what's going on. So yeah, yeah. sure. Well, it sounds like a, it sounds sounds more of like a basic stuff like golf and stuff. I still don't get it. I know Jen, you might be into the golf stuff because you live in that you live in that area where golf's kind of a big deal. But I watch I golf, but I don't really understand it to be honest with you. I just kind of you know. I don't get the birdie and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, I'm making myself sound like a complete idiot when it comes to sports, but golf, I don't know. It, it's not bad. My husband plays it. I tried to play. I just, I get bored. I just want to drive the cart like into stuff, and he's like, "Stop! We're at a golf course. You have to behave," and it doesn't work well. So. There you yeah, go. Lanny successfully ran over our older sister in a golf cart when we were little. So. Yeah, we were really little, and that was, you know, <laughs> kind of, and we lost older? control and she was back. So. She was only mildly injured. <laughs> she lived. <laughs> yeah, she lived. There you go. Um, so this one's from Donnie. Donnie put in a good uh, question here in the Q&A. He said, uh, obviously you both are very competitive and are supportive of, of each other. How serious does... The sibling rivalry get. You know, we we take it very seriously, but also not at the same time. Um, I haven't taken a baseball bat to her yet, but yeah, no ton, Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan thing going on here. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's what has really helped us succeed in in sports is we have our best friend and toughest competitor with each other, you know, day after day, um, and we push each other constantly. Uh, but then we also give each other support, so mm -hmm. it's uh, it it's really it really helped us out in biathlon to kind of reach the next level. Um, when you have someone there pushing you who's just as good as you and even sometimes better, especially on any given day, then it really pushes you to want to be better. And then you know, like when she goes good in a race, I super psyched about that. So um, yeah, we're really supportive of each other too. I think that would be a great asset to have somebody right there living training together. You know, yeah, and then you have that lazy day like I get, like, yeah, I don't feel like doing anything, and they'll be like, get up, or either, well, that's fine, you lay there, and I'm going to go train, and then it's like, oh, no, you're not training without me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we, it lucked, I mean, we really lucked out that we never really had many days where both of us were feeling lazy. Um, it was usually one or the other, so we're always giving each other a kick in the butt, like, all right, let's get going, you know, and, and so it really it really pushed us, and it, you know, I I always say it, it would be nice if everybody had a twin, because I think it's the best thing that ever happened to me, um, because, you know, I get to get to play with my best friend and, and competitor every day. Yeah, wear the same shoes, you know, dirty laundry. I, I need to borrow this. There's so much perks. There's so much more perks, you know, than, than cons over this stuff. You know, you're like, can you do my homework? Can you sit in class? I'm thinking of all the bad things right now, but I'm like, go to class for me. You know, I'll pay you 20 bucks or whatever. Those are the things that I would say. I don't know. Well, that's one thing that that's one thing that we did when we, when we were training is we'd, we'd always put something on the day. So, like, you know, we're like whoever shoots better this day. You know, the the person who doesn't is gonna have to do the laundry or cook lunch or you know dinner or yeah. something like that. So a little more pressure because you know who wants to do laundry for your sister? You know, yeah. Yeah, I already got. Now do people up, yeah. have trouble tying y'all apart? You know, I think I think people do sometimes. Uh, Trace and I are super identical. Like, I, there's a lot of times where some of the pictures of us when we were kids, I can't tell the difference. And luckily, my mom was very good. She labeled everything. Um, <laughs> you know, 
But uh, yeah, I think once you get to know us, you can tell the difference. But um, I think people struggle when they first uh, get to know us. Yeah, we have a little bit diff different personalities, I think, once you get to know us. But yeah, well, my, my daughter has her best friends are twins, and she tells them apart all the time. And I'm like, ah, oh, they drive me crazy coming through the house, and I don't know who's who. <laughs> hey, Steph, yeah. and they're like, this is Sid. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> It usually takes a little bit. You usually start picking up on like the little tiny things, and you usually can, you know, at least you know, you know, in high school there was a couple of twins that I became friends with, and I was able to tell them apart like that. But some of them a different fashion, or have a different look, or you know, it's little things like that. So I can use. Rebecca's like, they look totally different, Mom. I'm like, no, they don't. <laughs> but okay, yeah. whatever. Is it hard juggling being a wife and a mom and training and now three gunning and everything together? Is the whole package a difficult thing to juggle? Sure. Um, yeah, but I think it's. I mean, it's hard for anyone when they're trying to trying to do a bunch of different things. It's just. It's like anything else. You got to find find a balance in it. And you know, I think you just. Figure out what your priorities are, and then focus on focus on those things. So for me, family's family's my biggest priority. And um, for a long time in biathlon, you know, we were traveling and and we were gone from family for so long, and it was so hard. And so now we're finally able to be able to spend time with family, and it's awesome. But you know, and then shootings are probably our site. Shooting and hunting, you know, are probably our second priority. So. Um, you know, we you we just find time for that, you know, and and uh, make it work. Yeah, and I think Bothlon really helped in preparing us to be able to juggle a lot of different things. You know, when when we were doing Bothlon, we were we were doing that 24/7, and 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 there were a lot of out, uh, things outside of Bothlon that we had to do. Um, a lot of responsibilities, a lot of responsibilities and stuff. So it, it just um, I think that helped prepare us for uh, a lot of things in our life. Being busy. Yeah. There you go. Well said. Uh, we're going to jump into the giveaway here kind of late to this, but since I kind of slacked uh, this week, and I, I'm going to extend last week's giveaway to this week. So you guys, if you didn't answer last week, we're going to throw in a couple extra goodies in there, and uh, we'll put the put it like kind of a bigger giveaway. But what we have um, is a UM Tactical Trigger Guard holster, so we have two of those. I like to carry that appendix style, carbon fiber look, Glock 42, Glock 43, kind of suits the need right there. So we got two of those. Uh, Terran Tactical Innovations got their small Glock or M&P. I believe they have them for XDM too, which also fit the H and K uh, VP9. So they have uh, a couple of their small base pads. I believe they're plus two capacity. So awesome stuff. Everybody's always asking me, uh, you know, hey, do you got a discount on, you know, you got any extra base pads? You know, here's your chance to kind of win some TTI stuff. Terran Tactical Innovations PMAG base pads, which I believe those also fit the hex mags. I know, I know there's something in there that they do fit. So um, if you guys are into that, we have a couple of the PMAG uh, base pads, which is almost like a must in three gun. So you guys get a few here. Uh, we also have Terran Tactical Innovations got their Glock connector trigger kits. So two, uh, you know, a three and a half pound connector in your Glock. You got a stock Glock. Put in his springs, his connector. Boom, you're ready to rock. And TacticalLife.net got their Sure Grips in. CCW guns is what I, I've always had Sure Grips on my CCW guns. Just add a little bit of grip, they work. You can also throw them on your top competition guns if you don't prefer stippling or any of that stuff. So to answer the giveaway here, uh, there'll be a link on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page. We'll run this, for, we'll extend this one for about a week. So next Wednesday at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Eastern, we'll announce the winners on episode 91 of the Shooter's Mindset. We're going to have two winners get all that great stuff that I just said. So take advantage of that. I think you got to, someone someone let the sliding door open too long and got some got a bug flying around me. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> all right. Um, and yeah, that's going to that's going to do the giveaway and then let's kind of just jump in to the lightning round here. We're in the mid midway uh, point of the show, so let's get some lightning round in here. So, if you guys can only load your ammo for 3 gun or or whatever for hunting, would you guys do it on a Lee press or an RCBS press? Ooh, RCBS, definitely. RCBS, the rock chucker, man, that good old single stage. Nice and slow. Sometimes with rifle, that's the preferred method anyway. So there you go. 
long range rifle guys usually use that. Uh, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris get into a street fight in their prime. Who's winning that fight? Oh, probably Bruce Norris. I think. Chuck Lee. <laughs> Combination of the two. I don't know. That'd be like yeah. a hard. That would be a hard one. Yeah, it's pretty tough. It's. I go with Chuck. I think Chuck Norris could take Bruce Lee down. Yeah, just squish him. He's little. Yeah, Bruce Lee was. You know, there was a size advantage there, but it was like. Bruce Lee was like he had like magic powers, you know what I mean? It is almost, you know, it's hard. I don't know, man. I don't agree with that, but we'll, you know, we'll never find out, of course. I think Chuck Norris had an interview saying that he would whoop Bruce Lee, but Bruce Lee's not here to speak for himself, so. Yeah. There it is. Um, nine millimeter or forty-five, kind of all-around caliber. Carry, hunt, compete. What are you guys choosing? Uh, I, I'd say nine because. Um, if you have a well-placed shot, why do you need more? There you go. Well, that's fair. Uh, I'll take nine oh, any day, usually over 45, so I can agree there. Uh, billet or forged? This is kind of like AR receivers talk. What do you guys prefer? Forged. Simple old forged. I, I agree there. Uh, direct impingement or piston? Oh, Piston. Like, yeah. So both oh, fists. All right, fisting, we're gonna. Yeah, we'll agree. Why not? All right. Uh, zombies are outside your your front window. There, you're picking a rifle, pistol, or shotgun to get the job done. Ooh, shotgun, shotgun, more fun. Shotgun wins two weeks in a row. That's pretty <laughs> impressive. Shotgun is usually the less chosen. Usually people usually people go pistol or rifle or something like that with like a drum, fifty round mag or something. But let's see. <laughs> Shotgun wins it out. We've been working on our quad loads. We can, you know. Yeah, you should be able to handle it. You, you know, if we're talking, if we're talking, depends on the kind of walkers we're talking about. If we're talking like Walking Dead, yeah, a good fast quad load can really get some shredding action going on. Yeah. Uh, striker fire or hammer fire? Hammer. Hammer fire, yeah. both agree, yeah, but both agree that's fair. And last one of the day, uh, in and out burger or five guys burger joints? What are you choosing? Uh well since I've only heard of In and Out I'll, I'll try that. <laughs> I, it's a good choice because that's the favorite of them. That's the favorite of the show In and Out Burger. Um yeah. you know obviously you guys are eating a lot healthy so they haven't even probably eaten at these burger joints. Yeah, so really, yeah. There you go. But like I said I tell this everybody. I think you have one, and you know I think you guys are in like the Midwest area. Could be one over there, Vegas. When you got, you guys are at Shot Show, there's one real close by. You guys gotta stop by. Nice. I'm willing to try anything. So yeah. after all the years of travel and mystery foods and meats, I'm willing to try anything. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That'll do it for lightning round today. And then I think we can, yeah, lightning round. That was a fun one. We can uh, jump into our regular old Q and A. Jen, do you have any? Yeah, I have a good many, actually, on Facebook now. Some people just got home and tuned in and started asking questions. So Charles Knight wants to know, he said, the Olympic biathlon rifles look pretty wild. Please tell us about some of the customizations on your rifles, like the optics. Yeah, the, the, our Olympic rifles are, are pretty complex. Uh, we, we did a lot of modifications to them ourselves. Uh, we don't... Uh, use an optic, so to speak. Um, we do iron sights, and the reason why we shoot iron sights is because uh, if you take a breath in the winter, especially when you're breathing really hard, you're going to fog that optic up immediately. Um, so that was just a, not not even an option. So they, it's been iron sights ever since the beginning um, for biathlon. And uh, some of the things that we've done to uh, alter our, our rifles is we... Um, uh, custom built a, a, a cheek piece um, and a butt butt plate and uh, modified the pistol grip and the, the hand guard and and things like that. I mean, uh, being able to fit your your firearm to like a glove is is so important. You know, you want it to be kind of like an extension of you. And so making those modifications for us um, after you after you hammered really hard on the skiing and they get into the shooting, um, having that fit really well and not fighting it was important to us. Yeah, and those points on, on the rifle that um, that you're connected to, so your cheek piece, your your butt plate and your hand stop and everything like that are the most crucial 
um, on a rifle because that's where that's essential essentially your connection to the rifle so you know those have to fit really well and you know they have you have to be kind of working with the rifle you know fit like a glove so that you're not fighting it otherwise otherwise you're thinking about other things other than shooting and you're, you're not focused Good stuff. We have one more we're going to hit, and then, then we can move on. All right. Uh, John Crispies, he actually had a couple questions. Two of them kind of relate, um, and then one that's different. The He said, are there any skills that you've developed as athletes that help you outside of competition, like mental toughness, patience, and also what's more important for your sport, mental or physical toughness? I think I think... The, I mean, we've learned so many things from sports that have that we can transfer over into our daily life. I think, you know, he definitely hit a lot of them uh, with patience and and you know, mental toughness is is one of the biggest ones. Um, like I said earlier, biathlon has helped us to be able to handle a lot of, of things in our daily life and and also be be more patient. Uh, you know, we've been through a lot of things. You know, a lot of ups and downs in Bathon and and uh, they they really helped us to learn patience and and perseverance. And yeah, especially like when you're you're involved in a sport where it takes you almost a decade just to get to where you reach your goal of getting to the Olympics, something like that. That that teaches you patience because it's it's a long term thing. It's a you know you you want to reach those goals and it's going to take a lot of patience to do so and and a lot of hard work especially too. So. Yeah, very well said. Yeah, ten. I can see you know a lot of people giving up after five years or so, and they're just like, man, I had a bad run. I can't do this. But then that's also why you have a twin to kind of push you along, and a lot of things that that help you there. Get you know, I can see that happening with a lot of people. Yeah, it's it's just like shooting. Shooting is kind of a long long term sport. You can do it, gosh, until you can't hold up a gun anymore, and. Uh, it's you know it's one of those things you set your goals and and you can have an entire year where you don't shoot very well. I mean we had biathlon we had years in biathlon where we had an entire season. You work hard, you train hard, you get to the season, you have an entire season that can almost be a disappointment. But then you know you got to look at those long term goals. You know and especially with shooting, you know maybe you have some some matches that don't really go your way. But then you know you go back to the drawing board. You you know figure out what went wrong, then you kind of move on and, and focus on those those goals and keep keep going at going at it. Yeah. And then the other question that he asked, which is kind of more, you know, shooting sports that we do here, he said, Do you have any outside of the box training tips or drills to share that might help a USPSA shooter gain accuracy skills? Yeah, I think um, you know, as far as accuracy is concerned, um, Always accuracy over speed. Start out and uh, you know focus on the techniques. And I think one of the most important things to, to becoming more accurate is getting your shooting to the point where it's automatic and you're not thinking about it. Um, kind of one of the goals is when you when you're trying to become more accurate is you know, really working on the basics of the the sight picture, the um, trigger squeeze, and and follow through, and all those kinds of things. Um, breaking those down and, and perfecting those, and then getting to the point where you bring all those together and get to a point where you don't think about them, because your your mind can be a powerful tool, but also your, your worst, worst enemy. enemy. Yeah, well said. I can agree. I can agree with that. It seems people kind of forget. I see you see a lot of people kind of doing it the opposite, and I'm one of those guys that just wanted to be the the lightning bolt. And then you you look out there, and then oh man, that did I just miss that entire target? How did that happen? You know what I mean? So if you kind of work up the accuracy first, and then you know you're not thinking about it, then the speed comes in. I think that's a safe bet to answer yeah. that. Yeah, I think it's I think it's I think everybody's the same. Once once that buzzer goes off, you're gonna go fast. You no know, matter what, and go be so. A lot of times, when when that clock's going, 
you know, there's really no point of even thinking about how fast you've gone or, or your time or anything like that because you hear that buzzer. Your mind knows. You know you're, get, you're going to be going as fast as you can. So there's other more important things to focus on than, than the speed um, because the speed will be there. So if you can work on that accuracy and, like, like she said, those, those basic, basic principles of marksmanship, your trigger, your sight picture, um, your follow-through, your, your position, things like that, and make them become habits so that you're not thinking about it. And then once you get in there, shut the mind off, don't think about anything. Your best stages will be the ones where you don't even remember them. Like, ah, what, what just happened? That was probably your best stage because you weren't thinking about it, you weren't overthinking it. Yeah, very well said. I'm very much agreed there. Let's switch it back up a little bit here. So, watch like I said for the you know for like the fifth time. Watch a couple of videos. Uh, notice this, and someone put this in. Uh, I believe it was uh, Black uh, Black Stang mentioned this earlier in the Q and A, but I knew I had it on my list, so I didn't want to hit it right away. But 2014, uh, it was a uh, one of you guys was it Tracy or one of you guys made the Olympic team, and the other one was sick. And didn't make the team, and you you guys kind of there's kind of like an inspirational thing. There's a great you know great Guinness commercial that was based off of you guys off of this stuff, and I've shared it on the Shooters Mindset Facebook page if you guys are interested in seeing that video. But you guys you know being the sisters and the close close that you are, you gave your spot to your sister. Tell us that story and the reaction you guys had when you guys heard that stuff. Well, I think you know it was it was the kind of situation where. We were. It was kind of the culmination of our careers. We were getting down to the the final qualification. We had had maybe four qualifications before that, and there was, uh, I think, five or six of us left to make uh, four spots. And uh, um, we were both, uh, I think, kind of favored going in, and uh, hoping to make the team. Hoping to make the team, our, our third and final team, and. Uh, as luck would have it, I came down with a horrific cold. <laughs> and uh, in biathlon, um, it's the kind of thing that if, if you have a cold, you know, it's it's very difficult to compete. Um, sometimes in shooting, you can you can push through a cold and and not necessarily feel 100% physically. But biathlon, um, you know, you have to be 100%. And we're we're uh, skiing sometimes up to a mile to three miles before we even take our first shot. So. Um, yeah, if you're not if you're feeling down, you you, you are at that level, you you can't even can't even compete. So uh, I got sick right before the first race of Olympic trials, and so I thought, okay, well, uh, it it's best two out of three, and so if I sit out the first one and get healthy, then I have two more races where I can try to pull it together and and make the Olympic team. And so I sat out the first one. And as luck would have it, I got ten times worse. Uh, but you know, it's Olympic trials. It was my final shot at at, at um, my third Olympics, so I wasn't gonna uh, sit out on the sidelines. And and I raced the the second race and put myself under. You know, almost to the point where you know, just kind of yeah, stuck in bed. Yeah, stuck in bed, bedridden, and and. Uh, so I, I knew pretty much at that point that I wouldn't be able to race the third third race, and and was kind of watching my my uh, uh, dream slip away. And but at the same time, watching my twin sister and my best friend uh, reach her goals, and she had some awesome races put together, made the team, and they announced the team at the end. And right after the announcement, she says, "Hey, I, I have something to tell you. I um, let's go for a walk." And and so we went for a walk, and she says. I, I want you to go to the Olympics for me. I want you to race in my spot. And, uh, you know, it, was, it totally shocked me. I always thought I knew what Tracy was thinking, and, you know, we always know each other's moves ahead of time. And and that was the one time in my life where I had no idea she was thinking that. And uh, so we, we talked about it for a long time. And, and uh, yeah, we ultimately came to the, the conclusion that, that I would go and race for the Race for both of us. That's 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 awesome. It's a great story. Um, there, you know, like I said, they've been all over the news sharing this very same story. They have there's tons of videos on this stuff. We'll share. We'll put that stuff all in the links links below the show more links if you guys are more interested in the story. But pretty touching stuff. I mean, like I said, you know, 
I mean, how much, how much, you know, intense training to work up to that? That. Am, am I yeah, lagging? I am I lagging? I think one of the the reasons why a lot of people ask me why I why I kind of gave up the spot, and I think my experience in the the Olympic trials for the previous Olympics in 2010 kind of set me up for that. So we we had the trials just like like we did for 2014, and uh, I blew my first race I did horrible I did decent in my second race and the third race came around we showed we showed up at the venue to do the race and it's completely foggy you can't even see you can't see the targets or anything so they canceled the race and that was my I needed that last race to make the team you know that was my last shot to make the team and I they canceled the race and named the team off of the first two races so um, I didn't make that team that year uh, probably Probably could have with with another race, but you know I didn't have that opportunity. And you know it's like anything in life. Sometimes people need a second chance, and I would have loved a second chance. You know to be able to you know if the fog blew over or whatever, you know to get a second chance. And here I had the opportunity to give her a second chance. You know she was having a great year. You know so you know I always feel like if if you get have the opportunity to give someone a second chance, yeah, do it, help them out. You know. Everyone needs a little help every once in a while. Yeah, I get a couple of texts yeah, here. Yeah, get a couple of texts here from. Why? Why is my audio why, sounding? Why is my audio sounding? Are you guys hearing that? Are you guys hearing that? Yeah. Not, I can barely not, even talk. I can right barely now. even talk right now. Hold on. Hold on. Take it away, Jennifer. Take it away, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm lagging now I think too. I'm lagging now too. Emma. No, you sound good. Okay. I sound like I am on my end. I sound like I am on my end. Um, um, maybe try to turn your volume. Maybe try down. to turn your volume down. And see if that helps just a little bit. I'm getting doubles. I'm getting doubles. Audio doubles of Audio you and me. I don't know if it's on my end. I'm gonna come, come back out and come back in. But if you guys can hear me, kind of if you guys can hear double. me. Kind of yeah, Brian Corey sends a message. Brian Corey in. sends a message. In. Uh, you have a tear in your. You have a, you have a tear, tear in, in your bill. bill. You have a tear You're in your bill. About to cry after they tell You're that story. About to cry after they tell uh, that story. Brian Corey. Uh, it's an emotional Brian story. It's an emotional before the show. Before the show. I won't cry. Yeah. Got the tissue out of the way. There it is. Let me check. Let me check the tune in. And this audio is too much. Now who was? Now who was? Who the baby? Say that again. Didn't one of you just, have a, one of you just have a child recently? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Congrats. Uh, I had a baby about five, five months ago. So, yeah. Yeah, it's super fun. Whole new adventure. We're still, trying, adventure. To, we're still trying to figure out if she can tell the difference between us. Um, if my baby can. Yeah, if she can, if she can tell the difference between our faces. I'm sure she can, but you know, we'll have to wait till she can talk to really find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's been uh, she's been to a lot of shooting matches already. Um, she's been to eleven different states already, and poor things only four months before she was four months old. She was at eleven different states. So, you know, this is a our shooting's a family thing. We we uh, my husband comes to a lot of our matches and stuff, and you know we like it to be a family ordeal. So, um, yeah, poor little thing's been to. A lot of different places, and she travels as well. <laughs> That's me. That's me. I still I'm have a bad. I still echo. have a bad echo. Yeah, I'm gonna put in a question. Yeah, I'm gonna go out and come back in. I'm gonna go out and come back in. I have. And I think it's on. Um, I so think it's on. Uh, so we'll work it out again. But quickly here, but and then I'll leave. Here and, and then I'll again. leave and come back in. Uh, shooting sport uh, advice. Shooting sport advice. So between the Olympics and three gun, you guys have a lot of experience gun, with, uh, with uh, sponsorship. sponsorship. What kind of advice what can you give guys, guys looking for sponsorship? Looking for sponsorship. In three gun, et cetera. In three gun, et cetera. You know, I think the the biggest thing when when looking and asking for help is is be willing to help in return. Um, I I I really. I hate it when you see people go out and just ask, 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 and take, and and don't ever give anything back in return. I think it should be an equal partnership where you know you try your best to uh, give as much to your sponsors as possible. Um, you know, Tracy and I 
being a team from the get-go and also growing up doing team sports and things like that, uh, you know, that team atmosphere is important for us. And so um, we, we work really hard to, to try to give back as much as we can and have a team atmosphere with our sponsors, and I think that's important for, for anybody. Yeah, we've, uh, we've represented some of our, our sponsors for almost close to our entire biathlon career for at least a decade, and they're not our sponsors. They're our family. Like, they're, we're good friends with them. Like, uh, yeah, we love them. They, you know, we do whatever we can for them, and, and if you can develop a good relationship with your sponsors, you know, and and do what you can and just get out there and, and you know, promote them in a positive way and, and uh, you yourself be a positive role model for, you know, younger shooters that are coming up or, or people who are just getting into the sport. I mean, that's that's important. Then, then you know, your, your sponsors will see that and appreciate that. So I think that's probably how to do it. I, I think I agree I, with I that. I think I agree with that. I mean, my I'm I mean, not my, I'm not as big, you know, as the big, pros or whatever. Know, the so pros I have a lot of local, local but it's nice to just. But it's nice know, to just you know. The support goes both ways. The support goes both ways. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's important. It's definitely relationship. It's definitely relationship. Not a not know, a yeah. you know yeah. Yeah, okay. and, and it's, okay. it's it's a lot of work. I mean, you're gonna you know you. Put in, you know, try to try to put in as much work as you can for them, and and do what you can. So, you know, don't don't just expect to to get product or whatever. You know, expect to put in some work for them, and and really try to do what you can. Anthony had a Anthony question. Anthony had a question on here. Um, he said um, recently we he had said JP recently we had JP on the show. On the show. What are your and thoughts on their product? What are your thoughts on their product? What rifle are you shooting what from? What rifle are you shooting from? Uh, we we absolutely love JP rifles. Um, we just started shooting with them recently, and uh, you know John is an incredible guy. It's it's amazing to have a a shooter um, behind the company. There's a lot of companies out there where uh, the people the, the people running the company aren't necessarily shooters. So we we really appreciate. Um, you know the thought and and um, the the knowledge that comes into his products because he knows what he's what he's putting into them. You know, yeah, he's thought about every aspect of what goes into every part on his rifle and and what every part there's a function to it and and if purpose. you look at it there's a purpose there's a reason for being there and and quite genius actually for most for most of it so yeah we absolutely love it I mean coming from a background in rifle uh, rifle shooting I mean that's super important to us so uh, in three gun you know we're a little biased obviously to the rifle portion of the sport so that's super important and JP I think pretty much holds the cake for um, being one of the most accurate and most reliable rifles out there um, you know we shoot right now we're shooting we're trying out two different rifles with with him and and uh, you know, one with a little longer barrel, one a little shorter, you know, for maybe some shorter stages and things like that. Um, coming up, we're going to be doing Rocky Mountain, so we'll probably, you know, be focusing on a little bit longer barrel. And um, But we're just over, well, I guess we, I was going to say we're surprised at the accuracy of them, but I guess I'm not surprised. You know, JP puts a lot of work into it. Uh, he knows what he's doing, and uh, we love him. It's awesome. I think that was one of my favorite. I could have listened to him all night. Listen to him all night. Oh yeah. Yeah, he he knows so much. I, I don't know how we've talked on the phone quite a few times and, and in person, and and I could just listen to the guy for hours. It's almost like reading a a, a shooting bible. I mean, he knows so much about shooting, and and uh, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's fun to talk to someone who really knows uh, a lot about shooting like that for sure. You back with us, Anthony? You back with us, Anthony? <laughs> Maybe he's not. Maybe he's not. If he was back, I was going to back, back out. If he was back, I was going to back out. Because I still feel like I have, a bad, like I have a bad echo. 
I don't I don't hear it, but maybe you're probably hearing it. As long as y'all can understand. As long as y'all can understand me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Next question. Right, next um, question. What's the importance of dry the importance fire, of dry fire and, physical fitness and physical fitness to improve the improve improve ability? Ooh, that's a good one. I I, I like that question. Um, both very very important. Uh, something that we took in Bathon very seriously, and uh, I. Dry fire is one of those necessary evils. You know, a lot of times we don't like doing it because sometimes it can be a little boring, but it's so necessary. And one of the, one of the reasons is is because a lot of us, you know, we have so much else going on in our lives that you know we can't get the amount of trigger time that we need, or we can't get the amount of ammo we need, or whatever else. So, you know, dry fire is one of those things. It's it's a moment. You know, I mean, it's one of those things that you know you really can, you know. It, use as a tool to help you uh, improve in, in your shooting. Yeah, there's nothing that replaces live fire. Uh, so unless you have a range and unlimited supply of ammo um, to be able to shoot every day, all day, then dry fire is definitely a good supplement for sure. And as far as the physical training, uh, you know, I think, I think it's very important because the better shape you're in, the longer you're going to last throughout a, sh a match. You know, you, I see a lot of people that start to fade towards uh, the end of the day or even uh, the oh. second, third day of a, of a three-day competition. And, and if you're in, in good shape, you're going to be able to uh, last longer and um, stay me more mentally focused and, and sharp throughout the entire competition and not get to the point where you're your arms are shaking or, or anything like that is uh, affecting your shooting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll keep that mu muscle fatigue down. You won't have the muscle fatigue as much. Um, and then, you know, as far as uh, some of the shooting, whether you're shooting USPSA pistol competitions or three gun or whatever, you know, you, you're going to have movement between your shots in a, lot of, in a lot of the competitions. So, you know, the better shape you are in, the lower your heart rate's going to stay, the less barrel movement you're going to see. Um, you won't be breathing as hard, you know, you'll be able to stay more mentally sharp because you won't have that lack of oxygen, you know, from kind of running from target to target or whatever. So,